Hello and welcome to another day of Advent of Code. We are back for day 21. I'm going to show you my solution. And uh, we're also going to show a few optimizations to part two at the end. Uh, so stick around for that if that's what you're interested. All right, so for part uh, for day 21, we have an input that looks like this. Uh, basically just two numbers and a bunch of extra text. And the way this game works that we're going to be simulating is it is played on a circular board numbered 1 to 10. So if you go to the right of 10, you end up back at 1. Uh, kind of that weird mod thing that we had before last time. And actually, might as well implement that weird mod since we're here. While n is greater than 10, n minus equals 10. Or an n, just because we're going to need that later. Okay, players roll a die three times and move that many spaces. Then they add their position to their score. Uh, and in part one, the die counts from one to 100 and loops. Uh, so the neat thing about one to 100 and loops is there's a, a real helpful thing in the iter tools module uh, called iter tools dot cycle. So let's say we wanted to do a loop from one to five, for instance, uh, die equals this. Uh, this is now an iterator, and we can call next on it, and it'll give us the numbers to, well, this is 1 to 4, because I should have done 1 comma 6, but you get the idea. Uh, this allows us to make kind of a circular die, so we're going to use that same thing here. <laughs> so I have extra tabs, let me get rid of those. All right, so our part 1 die is equal to itertools.cycle, and we want to range from 1 to 100. We're going to do 1 to 101 to be, because uh, the right-hand side is not inclusive. Get your tools. Okay, so that gets our die out of the way. Uh, the first player to 1,000 wins. So we're going to have some sort of loop here. And we're going to have a score for both those. Player 1 score equals player 2 score equals 0. Oh, and of course, we need to do the parsing. Uh, the way I parsed this was a little bit sloppy. I did lines equals input s dot split lines, and then player one s one two three four five. <sighs> I did this, and then player one player two equals int player one s and int player two s. Just kind of some some sloppy little parsing there. Okay, so while true, all right, so they are gonna roll the die three times. I spent a long time only rolling the die once in my, in my live solution, so that was, that was fun. Uh, okay, so we also need to have the positions. Oh, I guess these are just the positions, that's fine. So player one goes first, uh, player one equals weird mod, player one plus, and then we roll the die three times. Next die plus next die, plus next die. Uh, oh, we also have to keep track of the number of die rolls. Die rolls equals zero. So we have done three die rolls. Rolls plus equals three. And then player one score. Oh, we'll just call this die because I don't want to fix that down there. Uh, player one score is going to be, we're going to add this to our score. And if player one score is greater than or equal to a thousand, then we know we are done. We can break out of our loop. Uh, and then we need to do basically the same thing, but for player two. Player two. Player two. Okay, so that's basically our simulation that we need to do here. And then we need to print out our expected value, or our, I can't yeah, print out the expected value. We need to print out the answer. Uh, part one which is the number of rolls, so die rolls, die rolls, times the loser's score. So the loser will be the minimum of these two scores. Min P1 score, P2 score. That should hopefully get us part one. Index out of range. Oh, why did I do zero two? What am I doing? Seven, three, nine, seven, eight, five. Cool, okay, so that's part one which is all fine and dandy. Uh, part two completely changes the problem. In part two, the die rolls either one, two, or three and causes multiple universes. So you could imagine uh, every, each turn you're gonna generate three times three, you're gonna generate uh, nine different universes. Wait, yeah, no. 
three times three times three 27 universes because there are three dice rolls not two and not one um so we're gonna we're gonna be generating a lot of universes uh the the cool thing about this though is for each of the combination of dice it's really just your current win states plus whatever your children win states are so you can compute the things in the future and eventually they're going to overlap there's actually not that many possible positions in this system uh oh also the winning score is now 21 instead of a thousand so a much much smaller winning score uh, but this means that there's a lot fewer states to represent here basically because of this board there's only 10 states that each of the two characters can be in so that's 100 states there uh, multiplied by the potential scores that the players could have and there's 20 different scores for each player so there's 400 scores there 400 times 100 is what 40,000 4,000 40,000 uh, so there's only 40,000 states in this oh I guess so then you have each turn so there's 80,000 states which isn't really that many um, and whenever you have a system where you know that there's a constrained number of states but you're you know have to compute a bunch of other stuff that kind of hints you towards some sort of caching model here and fortunately this is pretty easy I'll show you how I computed part two first even though it's a little bit extra and then we'll show you the two ways that I improved on that um, okay so we're gonna start with the cache, functools dot, well, we could use functools got cache, but I uh, am currently on Python 3.8. I guess we could run it with 3.9, um, but whatever. We're gonna do just an LR, LRU cache with max size none, so an infinitely sized cache, and we're gonna do uh, compute wins, and we are gonna take the player one, the uh, player one score, the player two, and the player two score. So this will be the position and their score. Um, and the way I did this initially was also whether it was P1's turn or not. And I'll show you a little optimization which makes this much faster by not considering that turn after we implement a whole bunch of copy and paste code, <laughs> basically. Okay, and this is gonna turn a tuple of P1 wins and P2 wins, which is gonna be our int int. If it is player one's turn, basically what we need to do is compute all of the different dice rolls that could possibly happen. And so we're doing three dice rolls and they can each be one, two, or three. So the way I did this is four I in one, two, three. And this is gonna get a little bit nuts. Uh, four I, J, and K. And of course, there is a slightly smarter way to do this with uh, iterTools.product. Uh, print list iter tools dot product one two three one two three and I know this is off screen but you'll get the idea when it prints. Um, so it, it computes every the the cross product of all of those iterables. Uh, so you could do this. I guess that will make the code slightly shorter. So we will do that. I guess. Uh, for I J, this is not one of the speed improvements. This is just a code length improvement. Okay, so these are the three dice that we would compute. Um, and we basically need to compute whether player one wins at this particular point, and that will count our wins. We have P1 wins and P2 wins is equal to zero. Um, so we're computing player one wins right now. Uh, P1, new P1 equals uh, P1, well, we gotta do our weird mod thing again. P1 plus I plus J plus K. Uh, new P1 score equals, uh, plus equals new P1. Uh, or wait, no, <laughs> equals P1 score. And I'm being very careful to not clobber these values up here because we're looping here and we don't wanna, we don't wanna mess those up. So we're computing a new value here. Uh, and if new P1 score is greater than or equal to 21, that means we've won. Uh, so we can update P1 wins wins plus equals one otherwise we have not win we have not won so we basically we need to recall this recursive function and compute the actual values there uh and we know this returns temp p1 wins and temp p2 wins equals compute wins and then we need to pass those in so new p1 new p1 score and then p2 score and then 
uh, or P2 and P2 score. That's what we call it, P2 and P2 score. And P1 turn is going to be false now. So we're basically doing, we're swapping turns. Uh, then we need to add those on our accumulators. P1 wins plus equals temp. P1 wins. And P2 wins equals temp. P2 wins. And then at the end, after this loop, we return P1 wins and P2 wins. So that's half of this problem. <laughs> the other half of this is copy pasting this and flipping, <laughs> flipping whether we're incrementing P1 or P2. So let's do that real quickly. Uh, which is going to be kind of annoying. So the new P2. New P2. P2 plus equals 1. Uh, and this will be P1. P1 score. New P2. New P2 score. Okay, so it's basically the same idea as this, except we have flipped this Boolean and we have flipped all the variables, which is a bit of a hint as to how we will speed this up later. Um, but this should this should work for what we need to do. Uh, so let's try this. Print uh, part two, compute part, or what did I call it? Compute wins? Yeah, I think I called it compute wins. Oh yeah, it's right there. Compute wins, and we have P1, zero, P2, zero, and P1 turn is true. So that should get us our part two. Unless we have a bug, we probably have a bug somewhere. Oh, type is not subscriptable from future annotations. P1 turns is not defined. Uh, it's supposed to be P1 turn. Uh, okay, so after computing that, we have the two numbers. We have the bigger and the smaller one. And of course, you could call min on this and get that value out. And that is not the right value. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm gonna pause and I will come back to the recording once I have figured out the bug and I will let you know what that is. Oh, I figured out what happened. So I actually have the right code here. Uh, I went and checked against my other solution here. Um, but the problem is I had mutated player, player one and player two up above here. So I just need to reparse this. And so if we just set player one, player one, player two equals four, eight, assuming that we just did a reparse there, <laughs> then we should get the right answer now, I think. Part one, part two. Cool. So this is the winning mist, and that is what we expect here. Okay, cool. So that's that's the expected value there. Um, but we can do a little bit better. There's a lot of duplicated code here, and um, it actually computes twice as much as it needs to because it's extra state. Unfortunately, it's very easy to fix this. We just need to get rid of this player one turn boolean and dedent this and get rid of this here. But since we need to swap off, we need to switch these actually. And that'll compute the same thing, but quite a bit faster now. Uh, oops, and we have to get rid of this here. Uh, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, wait, why is this not working? Oh, because we have to swap these. Yeah, 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 swap those. There we go. Okay, so now we compute the same thing, but it's twice as fast. We can actually go even faster. So the the neat thing about this iter tools product here, uh, we actually have a bunch of dies that overlap here. So if we were to sum those for PT in this. You notice that we roll the same thing with three dies uh, a bunch of different times. So what we can actually do is make a counter out of those. Uh, the rolls equals, uh, actually want this, uh, collections.counter over this. And now this will give us the count of a particular roll so we can do 4k count in rolls.items. And instead of doing plus equals one, we do plus equals count. And instead of doing plus equals this, we do this times count, which saves a lot of work, uh, which now makes this, oops, where's I? Oh, right. So instead of having three rolls, we do all three rolls at the same time. And you can see that it's, it's almost instant now. 
Um, so the the first op, uh, optimization improved it by like 2x, and this last one improves it by like 3x. So overall, we make like a, a 6x improvement on this. Uh, but anyway, that's day 21. Hopefully you found this useful, and I'll see you around for the next day.